Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to present you my PhD work titled Microbial Modulation in the Management of Dermatological Disorders. I'm Natasha Balaj. I'm a sixth-year medical student and a first-year MD-PhD student, and I'm doing my research at the Department of Dermatology. Uh, my, and my vi vision is to provide the best care for patients with dermatological diseases. And my mission is investigation of the effect of gut microbiome modulation in dermatological disorders. Uh, here are my two ongoing projects I will be talking about. And my first project is investigating the efficacy and safety of targeted gut microbiome modulation in psoriasis. And you can see the members of my team below. To give you some background, psoriasis is a chronic immune-mediated inflammatory skin disease which affects 125 million people worldwide. Uh, it reduces the quality of life and has a social, emotional, and physical impact. Lesional skin in psoriasis has a reduced Shannon index, which means a reduced microbial diversity. Psoriasis is linked to systemic inflammation and dysregulation of immune pathways, including T helper cell activity. Um, emerging evidence highlights the gut skin axis as a critical pathway influencing inflammatory skin diseases, including psoriasis. So this biosis and imbalance in gut microbiota composition has been shown to exacerbate the systemic inflammation uh, through increased gut permeability and um, uh, the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines and mediators such as TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, 12, 17, 22, and 23. Current, current gold standard therapies are topical corticosteroids and vitamin D analogs in mild to moderate psoriasis and methotrexate and biologics in severe psoriasis. However, these have limited long-term efficacy and have several side effects such as skin atrophy, infections, and uh, hypersensitivity. Also, this biosis persists uh, despite the treatment. Um, this uh, bidirectional interaction between the gut and skin provides a, uh, provides a compelling opportunity for novel therapeutic approaches uh, such as microbiome modulation. And our aim is to evaluate the efficacy and safety of microbiome modulation in psoriasis. So our clinical question is, is gut microbiome modulation effective and safe in the treatment of psoriasis? I used the PICO framework where the population was psoriatic patients, intervention was targeted gut microbiome modulation with probiotics, prebiotics, symbiotics, and postbiotics, comparatories placebo or standard treatment. The main outcomes are disease activity measured with PASI or BSA, uh, PASI is psoriasis area and sever severity index, and BSA is body surface area. The secondary outcomes are quality of life. And my hypothesis is targeted gut microbiome modulation is effective and safe in the treatment of psoriasis. And if it's true, my clinical implication would be updating psoriatic treatment guidelines and improving patient outcomes. You can see my uh, search key, and the first domain refers to the disease, and the second domain refers to the intervention. Um, I conducted the search in three databases, PubMed, Embase, and Central, and you can see how many hits I had. Uh, we found previous systematic reviews and uh, meta-analysis, and also a previous prospect registrations, uh, but our research will be more concise. Uh, we will use um, uh, we will use um, better statistical methods and um, we will include uh, patients with psoriatic arthritis and also specify the bacterial strains. On the flowchart, you can see that after the title and abstract selection, I have left uh, 92 articles. This is my three key articles, which are same in their PICO. And this is my progress. Um, until the end of this week, I want to finish the full text selection. Moving on on my next project, investigating the efficacy and safety of gut microbiome modulation in burn injuries. Every year, around 11 million people worldwide require medical treatment for burn injuries, according to WHO. In severe cases, that is more than 20% of total body surface area, there's a massive inflammatory cascade which develops in the first 48 hours after the burn trauma. This systemic response also leads to a rapid collapse in micro microbiome. Mortality remains high. 
around 30 to 40 percent, uh, mainly due to sepsis and multi organ failure. The gut plays a um, central role here infection, bacterial translocation, and so called leaky gut caused by stress and ischemia uh, further amplify inflammation. This hyperinflammatory state impairs immune regulation and delays wound healing. According to recent studies, there's up to 70% loss in gut microbial diversity after the first week um, of the trauma. In particular, there is loss of um, beneficial genera such as lactobacilli, bifidobacteria, and this is associated with higher interleukin-6 and higher CLP levels and also delayed reapitalization. Our aim is to evaluate the efficacy and safety of gut microbiome modulation in burn injuries. My clinical question is, is targeted gut microbiome modulation effective and safe in wound healing and burn injuries? I also use the PICO framework, where population was patients with burn injuries, intervention is targeted gut microbiome modulation interventions, comparator is placebo or standard treatment, main outcome is our wound healing time and length of stay in the hospital, the secondary outcomes are infection rate, sepsis incidence, and inflammatory markers. My hypothesis is targeted gut microbiome modulation is effective and safe in the treatment of burn injuries. And if it's true, my patients with severe burns who receive gut microbiome modulation would have faster recovery and fewer complications. This is my preliminary search key. The first domain refers to the verb burn and its synonyms, and the second domain refers to um, gut microbiome modulation. This is my free key articles. They are all RCTs um, and they are same in their PICO. And to sum up, uh, I'm planning to submit my projects until September 2026 and until uh, October 2027. And I would like to end my presentation with a quote from Albert Einstein. Uh, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. And I'm open to questions and uh, further discussion. <laughs> Thank you very much for this nice presentation. Any questions from the audience? I see a hand there. Please pass the microphone there. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. I'm just curious, could you explain a bit more what is the Shannon Index? Yes, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, Shannon Index is the most commonly used uh, measure of microbial diversity. It not only describes how many different uh, bacterial species are present in the uh, colony, but uh, also uh, how well, how evenly they are distributed. Uh, so, for example, high Shannon index are seen in healthy population, which means a uh, high microbial diversity, and uh, low Shannon index is seen in psoriatic patients, for example, and uh, it, it means uh, lower microbial diversity, where, um, where is a few uh, dominant species. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, the only thing I would like to learn more about is because I haven't heard about it uh, a lot before is I know what probiotics are, but could you briefly explain what prebiotics and biotics and postbiotics are? Yes, thank you for your question. So postbiotics are not living bacteria, but uh, bacterial products, uh, which can be, for example, short chain fatty acids, um, bacterial peptides, enzymes, metabolites, or even components of uh, bacterial cell wall. Um, and symbiotics, US symbiotics, yeah. is um, like a combination of probiotics and prebiotics, which are designed uh, to be more efficient and uh, to work synergistically. And um, to give you some example, mm, uh, for example, bifidobacteria and, uh, and inulin, which is, which is a fiber, and lactobacilli and fructooligosaccharides are used commonly. Thank you. So first of all, congratulations for your presentation. Just a quick question. How does the gut microbiome modulation look like in practice? 
So is it something given on Peros or intravenously, for example, in a burn patient in the ICU? How does it look like in practice? Um, thank you for your question. Uh, so I am looking on, uh, only into studies which are uh, probiotics, prebiotics, symbiotics, and postbiotics used orally. But uh, there are many, many uh, researches that um, there, um, there are these microbiome modulation used topically. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. My question would be regarding your second project and your PICO framework. Um, is the intervention there only gut microbiome modulation or current standard of care plus gut microbiome modulation? Thank you for your question. Uh, it's current um, standard therapy plus microbiome modulation because in severe cases, uh, there's a... a there's a big risk of uh, sepsis and multi-organ multi failure, and uh, we want to reduce this risk. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you for your uh, nice presentation. Uh, if your hypothesis is right in the first project, uh, it would mean that uh, probiotics uh, will be a complementary therapy alongside with uh, the current psoriatic therapy. Thank you for your question. Yes, exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't want to explain that more because I think um, that it, it will be a very, very good complementary therapy for, uh, for psoriatic patients. Mm -hmm.